lesson, we're going to talk about a normal sinus rhythm and the steps you need to learn to be able to identify it on an EKG. So let's get started. If y'all refer back to the lesson about the electrical AMP of the heart, you will remember that the SA node initiates that electrical impulse. It travels down to the AV node and then the bundle of his and then the right and left bundle branches and then the Purkinje fibers. So in a normal sinus rhythm, the impulse is initiated by the sinoatrial node. This is the proper name for SA node. And it is actually where the term sinus rhythm comes from. Because the electrical conduction is originated in the sinoatrial node. So when that SA node stimulates the atria to contract and the ventricles to contract, it does this at a rate of about 60 to 100 beats per minute, and it produces the PQRS waveforms on an EKG. So in the next slide, I'm going to show you guys how to interpret this normal sinus rhythm in six steps. And the cool thing about these six steps, it will also help you identify all abnormal rhythms. Okay, so these steps are the easiest way to interpret a heart rhythm. The first thing you need to look at is the regularity of the rhythm. So is it regular or is it irregular? And I'm going to show you how to do that on the next slide. The second step you need to look at is the rate. Is it between 60 to 100 beats per minute? And the third step you need to look at the PQRS ratio. Is it one to one? Do we have one P wave followed by one QRS? In the fourth step, you need to look at the PR interval. Is it between 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds? In the fifth step, you need to look at the QRS complex. Is that between 0 0.06 to 0 0.12 seconds? So after you figure out steps one to five, you will be able to identify that rhythm. You would also need to remember the rules and uh, for each of the rhythms. And we have actually provided you with resources and cheat sheets to help you remember the rules and characteristics of each rhythm. But we will go through those in the upcoming lessons as well. But for now, Let's go to the next slide so we can do each of these steps and identify our rhythm. So the first thing we need to determine is if the rhythm is regular. In order to do that, you need to look at the number of boxes between the R waves. So from this R wave to this R wave, we have about 21 small boxes. From this R wave to this R wave, we have about 20. And then from this R wave to this R wave, we have about 23 small boxes. So for the most part, they are within one to two small boxes. And that is enough to call it a regular rhythm. If I were to have, let's say 20 boxes from this R wave to this one, and then 32, from this R wave to this R wave, that would be irregular. But in our strip here, we are regular. Another way to determine it if the rhythm is regular or irregular would be to get a piece of paper and put it right here. And then you would make a little mark at the top on the paper where the R wave is. And then you would move the paper down and you would march it out to see if these R waves match with the R waves that you have put on the paper. And this is actually an easier and quicker way to determine if the rhythm is regular or not. So let's move on to step two. So let's look at the heart rate. If you remember from calculating the heart rate lesson, we can find the number of small boxes from here to here. So we have 20. So then we would divide 1500 by 20 because this is the most accurate method and we would have 75 beats per minute. And that is within normal range. 
So our heart rate is normal. So in the third step, we need to look at the P to QRS ratio. And do we have one P wave followed by a QRS? And we do. Every single P wave on this strip is followed by a QRS. And then in the fourth step, we need to look, measure the PR interval. So we need to measure from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS. And it is about four small boxes. So from here to here, we have four. And from here to here, we have four as well. So if you remember, each small box is 0 0.04 seconds. So we would multiply 4 times 0 0.04 seconds, and we would have 0.16 seconds. So our PR interval is 4 small boxes or 0 0.16 seconds, which is also within the normal range. And then our next thing we need to look at is the QRS complex. And that would be from the beginning of the Q wave to the end of the S wave. And so we would measure from here to here and from here to here, which is about one and a half small boxes. And of course, we would multiply that times 0 0.04. So we would get 0 0.06. So our QRS complex is one and a half small boxes or 0 0.06 seconds. And that is also within the normal range. So our rhythm is regular. Our heart rate is regular. Our PR interval is 0.16, so that is regular as well. Our P to QRS ratio is one to one and our QRS complex is normal as well. So everything is normal and these are the characteristics of a normal sinus rhythm. As we interpret other abnormal rhythms in the other lessons, you will see how these six steps will help you identify all of them. So the biggest takeaway from this lesson is to remember the steps to identify a rhythm. First thing, is it regular or irregular? Is the heart rate normal? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Do we have one P wave followed by one QRS? Is our P interval between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds? Is the QRS complex? between 0 0.06 and 0 0.12 seconds. If all of these things are normal on an EKG, then we have a normal sinus rhythm. Whenever any of them become abnormal, we have some type of arrhythmia, and it is our job as nurses to identify it quickly so that we can take action and prevent complications. An example would be, a patient would have a stroke if they're in an AFib rhythm. But we'll talk about that in, an, in the AFib lesson. So the main nursing intervention that you need to get from a patient in a normal sinus rhythm would just be to keep monitoring them as long as they remain stable. So I hope you guys are excited to start identifying rhythms and make sure that you check out all of the resources attached to this lesson and the cheat sheets so that you can practice. Also make sure that you look at the other lessons in this module so that you can learn how to identify all abnormal rhythms. Now make sure that you guys go out and be your best selves today and as always, happy nursing.